what time it is guess 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 what time it is guess it. it's camp weekend ween time can you believe it it's already halloween weekend where has the time gone i'm so excited i'm unprepared i'm not gonna lie to you um <laughs> it's wednesday night right now as i'm filming this intro but i decided that i'm going to start on my <laughs> tbr for camp weekend ween a little tad bit early and the reason for that is because this weekend is going to be a pretty busy weekend for me and i'm nervous that i am not going to get all the reading in time that i want to so because of that i'm starting a little bit early i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sure you don't mind i'm sure you don't really care this weekend you know i'm working Friday and Saturday and tomorrow and there's just a lot of things going on. You know, I got a live show happening on Friday morning, some things that are still up in the air that could be happening this weekend. It's just, it's gonna be a busy weekend. Luckily, I do not work on Halloween. So like, that's pretty cool. Halloween's gonna be a blast. I thought I would get a jump start on my TBR for this readathon. I mean, I haven't even told you like what I'm planning to read for this readathon. And to be honest, my TBR is still kind of chaotic and I don't know everything that I'm going to be reading, but I have some ideas. I mean, I'm trying to keep things, you know, as short as I can for this readathon, like that is the goal. Um, but I thought I would start with That Weekend by Kara Thomas because this one is the longest book on my TBR because this one's like your average, you know, like 320-ish page book. But I do have this whole, um, audiobook checked out for my library right now. So that is why I want to start with it tonight. I just want to start listening to this on audio, see how it goes. I'm also planning on reading Nothing But Blackened Teeth because, oh my gosh, this one looks creepy. It sounds amazing, terrifying. Um, it's also pretty short. It's like about a little over 100 pages. It's like 120 pages. Also would like to read this book. I downloaded the ebook and it's called You Should Have Left. And it's like a haunted house story apparently. And somebody recommended it to me in my Instagram DMs. And they said that they think that I would like it. And then I sent it to my friend Mikay. And I was like, yo, have you read this? And he was like, no, let's buddy read it. And so now me and Mikay are going to buddy read this one during <laughs> Camp Weekend Ween, hopefully. I also do have a few audiobooks on hold at my library right now that possibly could come in during this readathon. Like, wouldn't that just be amazing? Incredible timing. Um, one of them is Cackle by Rachel Harrison. This one says available soon, which usually means that I'm going to be getting it within the next few days here. So hopefully if the gods are on our side, I can get this book checked out to be in time for this readathon. So yeah, anyways, I'm gonna stop blabbering. I'm gonna start listening to that weekend on audio. I honestly feel like this is the perfect camp weekend ween book just because of the fact that it has weekend in the title. 
like how how cool how iconic i hope to love this you know this one's a young adult thriller so i'm a little bit nervous but i also i have read um this author wrote this book the cheerleaders and that was another young adult thriller and i actually really really loved that one so because of those reasons i'm hoping that i will love this one too but anyways i'm gonna start listening to it on audio i have a few things that i need to do like around my room right now like i need to make a thumbnail for the live show and i need to um get out some books to film a video tomorrow so i have some things that i'll be doing like walking around my room while i listen to this on audio and i will let you know my thoughts on it in the morning <laughs> isn't to win it's just to make sure Doraline loses <laughs> honestly that's like my entire life <laughs> hey, hi so this morning Meg premiered the video that I did that was like the booktuber battles video and it was so much fun to watch like dude I don't know how she edits that stuff like that is a lot of editing and like so much work on her part so like huge props to her oh my god it was so much fun to watch and like I went head to head with Kayla and it was just so much fun like seriously one of the highlights of the year for me and so we watched that this morning which was like super cool and i want to let you know that last night i did get 41 percent of the way through the audiobook of that weekend and this might sound weird but i'm glad that i started with this one because i'm honestly really not enjoying it so far i don't know it's just reading like very young adult to me so far and you know like the whole premise is that this girl goes to this like cabin with her friends for for the weekend and it's supposed to be like prom weekend i think and i think their parents think that they were going to prom but they weren't and their parents like didn't know where they were and she just like wakes up with like a head injury and like her friends are gone and she doesn't know what happened to her friends and like she keeps doing that thing where she's like no but my friends wouldn't hurt anyone and like i know them though and it's just kind of annoying because it's like really repetitive in that way and i don't know it's just kind of boring like literally nothing's happening like she can't remember anything that happened that weekend but we are flashing back and forth between the two timelines but i mean like i said it's just it's reading super young adult you know there's like young adult romance in it young adult betrayal between these teenagers and i just don't really care a whole lot and by some of the reviews that i was seeing um a lot of people are saying like the ending gets like super problematic and stuff so honestly i'm kind of curious to just finish it for that reason like i just want to know where this could be going but last night oh it was kind of annoying one of my nails just decided to yeet itself off of my finger so uh that's annoying so now i'm kind of like picking at the rest of them because like i work tonight and i'm like i don't want to go to work with like one nail missing and these two honestly feel like they're about to like fly off i guess i'm just gonna be listening to this audiobook and trying to pick off my nails this morning but anyways if you're wondering where i'm at i'm actually at the uh doctors with rachel because as of today it's her 10 month follow-up of uh you know her like kidney check-in she has to get an ultrasound done today so um hopefully all is good you know it's <laughs> just a little bit just just a tad bit stressful you know just because i'm hoping everything's okay with her but she hasn't been experiencing really any like too much pain so like we're hoping that everything's fine she doesn't get results like she doesn't get to talk with the doctor about these results for like another week but we'll see as of now she's just getting the t the you know scan done today so we'll see obviously but he looks like he Whoa, well, look at that. What did you get? Chorizo and eggs. Chorizo and eggs. Dang. I just got tacos. Yum. Alright, hi. It's been a couple of hours. It's been actually like kind of a busy morning, you know? Like me and my sister, we went out to lunch. We got Mexican food. It was so freaking good. I actually like bit off all of my freaking nails because they were kind of driving me crazy and honestly like i feel so free after i take off my acrylics like i don't really think i like acrylics that much anymore i don't know <laughs> but i wanted to let you know that i am now 59 percent of the way through the audiobook i only listened to like a little bit more and i'm in part two of it now and honestly i'm getting so bored that i'm considering dnfing it because i just don't know if i care and also i kind of just want someone to like tell me how it ends and then like i don't really care to read the rest but Regardless, I am going to just continue listening to this audiobook on the way to work. If I lose my nerve, I might shut it off and like turn on a podcast or something. I don't know. But for now, I'm just going to listen to it on the way to work. Here, I can her in the photo. Her name is Zoe Grace. Her bio is linked to a blog. Hi, here's where I'm at. It is um, Thursday night. It's still October 28th. It's like 11.15 at night right now. And I'm not enjoying that weekend. I got all the way up to page 208. I just don't care. 
Like, I just really don't care. And normally I feel like I would finish this anyways because I don't have that much left. I'm like 68% of the way through the audiobook, I think. So normally I would just finish this, but because I'm in the middle of a weekend long readathon, I feel like time is of the essence and I just need to be reading books that I'm really enjoying right now. So for those reasons, I'm gonna DNF this right now because I'm just not really enjoying it. And I'm sorry to start off this, you know, readathon with such a downer, but honestly, it's just, it's just not my thing. Like, I don't know, I'm just not really enjoying it. Another reason why I feel like I should DNF that right now is because I just got an audiobook checked out from the library that I was really hoping that I would during this readathon because it's Cackle by Rachel Harrison. And yeah, this is just an audiobook that I've been hoping that I would get access to. I'm not sure if this one is like a thriller or a horror book, but I keep seeing from people that they think it'll be perfect to read for Halloween time. So like how perfect will this be? I'm also just kind of tired today. Like, I don't know what it is. Like my eyes just feel so tired. I don't know if my contacts were just really bugging my eyes or something, but my eyes feel all kinds of like itchy right now. So I just kind of want to like close my eyes and put in an audiobook and listen instead. I did just eat quite a lot of food. So I don't think I'm going to be able to go to bed anytime soon. So hopefully I can listen to a decent chunk of this audio tonight. And then tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. I have the live show with Kayla for the book troupe. And we're going to be discussing The Last House on Needless Street. And I'm really excited for that so that's gonna be happening tomorrow but for tonight i'm gonna start listening to cackle isn't my lock screen so cute like it's just so cute you know also got out my little um cute little skeleton mug i love this color don't you it's just like really it's a, it's just like a really great color and i'm only gonna be drinking out of this for like the entire readathon i've decided What's up? Hi, it is uh, Friday morning. It's about like 10 50 a.m. right now and I'm about to do the live show with Kayla for The Last House on Needless Street, which I'm so excited about. I've kind of been frantically like looking through my notes of the book just to make sure I've got everything together in my brain. Um, but I wanted to let you know that last night I actually got 40% of the way through the audiobook of Cackle by Rachel Harrison and I'm really surprised to say that I'm really enjoying this audiobook so far. I'm just really relating to the main character, Annie, and like her, some of her loneliness, you know, and like some of the things that she's saying. Um, I actually like wrote down some of the quotes that she said because I was like, I was like very relatable. And this whole like story is about how she moves from Manhattan, New York to this like upstate little cozy village. And the cozy village in this book is just so cute. And it just really stands out in my mind as like this really cute place. And then um, Annie meets this woman named Sophie who is like very mysterious and kind of strange. And she has this like mansion in like the middle of the woods. And it feels like a very strange mansion. Like something's going on. It's just so interesting and mysterious. And I really like these characters so far. One of the things that Annie says that I thought was so relatable is she says, you never realize how special it is to share a random inside joke until something funny happens and you have no one to tell then you realize how much of your life fades away without a witness and i was like god damn like that is ugh, that hurts there's also some like really creepy things happening in this book in relation to spiders so like if you have a fear of the spiders this one might be a little bit like Oof. I'm like mildly like pretty scared you know I'm, I have like an average fear of spiders I think but some of these scenes I'm like oh my god like I almost had to like pause the audiobook because I was like disgusted at what I was hearing but overall I'm really enjoying this like I just I'm surprised because like I DNF the last book that I read from this author so I, I wasn't really sure what to expect but I'd heard some good things about this one from my friends so I'm excited that I'm enjoying it like yes I think I made the right decision last night by DNFing the other book and starting this one instead <laughs> so yeah very excited I'm gonna continue with that audiobook later on today after I finish this live show with Kayla and I'm so excited. All right, so it's nearly 12:30 now. Um I just wrapped up the live show with Kayla and it was genuinely so much fun. Like it was such a good live show because we had such a good discussion about that book. Me and Kayla actually stayed on the stream for a little bit after just like talking for a while and it's just it's so nice to be able to talk to other creators and like get advice on like, you know, cuz like being a creator can be so isolating sometimes. So it's really nice to be able to get the chance to talk to other creators about things and now it's almost 12 30 and you guessed it i mean you already know i'm going to get an acai bowl because i'm a little bitch <laughs> no but seriously like i go to work at four tonight and i just really want an acai bowl to start my day acai bowls just always make me feel better you know so we're just gonna start with that today even though it's already 12 30 i know she went well down or something like it i'm able to ignore the sensation working oh 
shit. Look at her. She's stunning. Um, gonna eat this and continue to listen to this on audio. I'm now 49% of the way through, so yeah, about halfway through, so let's go. I am back with another update. It's like almost 2.30 in the afternoon, and I apologize for not updating this vlog as often as I should because, you know, I'm literally in a readathon right now. <laughs> but I find it hard to update when I'm just listening to a book on audio because when I'm just listening to a book on audio, I can, like, multitask and do other things. And so I've been, like, updating my Goodreads and just, like, doing some stuff on my laptop while I've been listening to this. And since I don't have the physical book to, like, read along with it, I just feel like there's no point in filming me doing other things. Like, I don't know. But I wanted to let you know that I'm now 87% of the way through it. I actually only have an hour and 20 minutes minutes left of it so I should be able to finish it before I go to work which is cool and I don't know I feel like personally this book is starting to get a little bit repetitive it's just you know we're following this girl who becomes friends with this other woman named Sophie who's like very mysterious like there's something going on with her the house that Sophie lives in is very you know kind of maybe haunted and just kind of spooky and like there's something happening there and while I am very intrigued still by the character Sophie and like what's going on at the house I just feel like it's getting to be a little bit repetitive like the same things are happening over and over again and it's just like a lot of her and Sophie hanging out and like Sophie will do something that's kind of strange or like something strange will happen at the house but like the story just doesn't feel like it's moving anywhere it's just kind of like the same stuff over and over again well and there's the whole thing too with this character how she's dealing with a breakup you know she was like with this guy for like 10 plus years I think 10 plus years yeah and she's like dealing with this breakup that was kind of like sudden and she is you know constantly talking about how she doesn't know how to be alone and how like she's very lonely now and how she's it's very tempting for her to want to like get in contact with him and call him and she doesn't know how to not be with him and so that's like a huge part of her character but it just feels like it's kind of getting repetitive with how much she's talking about her ex and like wanting to be with her ex and, and I do realize that yeah like it is really hard to deal with a breakup I mean I haven't dealt with a breakup like that personally but I imagine like if you're with someone for 10 years like yeah it's gonna be really hard to move on but also throughout this book you know I'm 87% of the way through and she's still dealing with you know trying to move on from her ex and it's just really repetitive like her cycle of thoughts of like I want to reach out to him but I shouldn't but I want to but I shouldn't it's just it's a lot of that over and over and over again but regardless I am curious to see how it ends I'm actually kind of glad that I'm listening to this on audio instead of reading it physically though because I've noticed that the chapters are very long. That's why I'm kind of glad that I have the audiobook because I don't really notice how long the chapters are when I listen to it on audio as opposed to like reading physically, you know? But yeah, anyways, I'm gonna listen to this for the next hour. I should be able to finish it before I go to work and I will let you know my final thoughts then. <laughs> Hello, it is now 3.30 in the afternoon and I'm happy to let you know that I finished listening to Cackle on audio and I don't know, I kind of just have the same feelings as I did when I last updated it. I feel like this book was fine. I guess I just expected a little bit more out of this story. Like I really wanted it to go somewhere, especially for like a horror novel. I guess I just expected it to up the game on like the horror level, you know, of spookiness that was in this book. I feel like it never really got there for me. But regardless, I still had a fun time reading this book and the main character was mostly relatable, even though at times I found her to be like a little bit annoying. But I think I'm gonna end up giving this three stars. Like it wasn't anything super, super memorable, but I. I still had a decent time listening to it. I definitely enjoyed though the first half a lot more than the second half because it was really interesting at first but then it just slowly started to get very repetitive and I just wasn't a fan of that second half very much so I don't know. But anyways, I am on the way to work and I don't know if I'm going to listen to an audiobook or if I'm just going to listen to a podcast on the way to work because I don't have any of the other books that are on my TBR on audio right now. <laughs> back in bed obviously <laughs> um after working a pretty busy friday night you know it was a pretty busy night it was kind of also a chaotic night because literally okay we have like a pickup window at my restaurant you know where people can come and pick up their phone orders and online orders and stuff like that and this truck literally broke down <laughs> in our drive-thru for our pickup window like at our window 
So, and it was like during peak rush time, like they literally broke down at like six o'clock and they were just sitting at the window for like five minutes after we gave them their food. And I like went up to the window and I was like, hey, is something wrong? Like, you know, with your order? And they were like, no, our truck just won't start. And I was like, that is truly unfortunate. And it was just like, it just made it feel even more busy because people that would normally just come through our pickup window were like having to come into the restaurant to come in and pick up their food because the drive through was all blocked off because of that. It's just like, it was crazy stressful, you know? So I think next up, I want to read You Should Have Left on my phone. And I'm excited because I'm gonna be buddy reading this with my friend Mikay, which should be exciting Hoping that I can finish this tonight because it's only like 87 pages on my phone So it doesn't feel like it would take too long for me to get through this But I'm gonna be honest my brain right now is just like all over the place <laughs> Because there's just so much going on in my life right now And it's things that I can't really like talk about with you yet because nothing's set in stone yet Like there's a lot of things that are up in the air right now, but there's just a lot going on and so I'm just like I'm I'm having trouble focusing lately and I think that's why I've been needing audiobooks to help me get through books so I can like listen to the story so that my brain doesn't just like wander. So I'm sorry if this readathon is like an epic fail because I can't seem to concentrate but we're hoping for the best. I'm just gonna jump into this now and I will update you hopefully when I've finished it in the morning. <laughs> also still drinking out of my skeleton mug. Don't think I forgot. It's still here. <laughs> So I feel like I need to do a quick update on this book because I'm 37 pages into it and I'm kind of really not liking this so far. And that's for like a few different reasons because um, I'm really not a fan of the writing style. Like it's just very disjointed and very weird. There's no quotes around the dialogue which is making it very hard to follow for my brain. I'm like are they talking or are they not talking? It's like unclear what's even happening in this story to me. I just had to go and read the description of the book and it says it's about this guy who's trying to write the sequel to this like screenplay of a successful movie that he did recently. And so he's trying to write the screenplay and I guess this book is kind of compared to The Shining because it's about how him and his wife and his daughter go up to this like cabin that they're renting like an Airbnb and then he's like slowly starting to like lose his mind while he's there. But it's just really confusing honestly to read and I, I just really don't like the writing style. It feels like very pretentious but also like just not very good and I know that this book was translated so I'm wondering if like the translation is what's making it feel so disjointed like I don't know but it's doing that really obnoxious thing where like the sentence will end like literally in the middle of the sentence and then it'll like start the next chapter or like the next paragraph or something we do get to read some of his screenplay within this like novella and I just I could not care less about whatever the fuck is happening in this you know screenplay like I don't even know who these characters are and he doesn't even seem to care a whole lot about these characters either so I'm just kind of frustrated um i just messaged me k on instagram to see how he's feeling about it he said he just started it right now too so i'm kind of curious to see if he's going to enjoy this because so far i'm like really not feeling this one honestly i'm tempted to like dnf and give it one star right now but like i'm gonna push through see how it goes i want to give it a fair chance i mean it's only 87 pages do you see this do you see what i mean it's just like the middle of a sentence even wrote down that she was constantly texting on her and then it just ends like the sentence just ends there and it goes to like the next paragraph like this writing style is obnoxious i can't look at this little baby <laughs> good morning dingy good morning it is saturday morning i feel like i'm just changing from one camp camp weekend ween shirt into the next they're just so cute i really i really do love this blue one it's like the indigo color i think i just uh, love it but i wanted to let you know that last night i finished reading you should have left me and mckay ended up buddy reading this book and we were like messaging back and forth like all night about it is this book called you should have left or you should have dnf'd <laughs> I'm really sorry to the person who recommended this to me on Instagram because I, I don't blame you for recommending this to me because this sounds like something that I would really enjoy in a book. It honestly, like, the premise sounds like it would be similar to The Shining, which, you know, I should have enjoyed this book, but oh my god, uh, I think this is like a one-star book for me. I don't know if it's because this book was translated and, like, maybe there was something in the translation that just did not work, but this book 
I could not stand the writing style. Like, it was so disjointed. I mean, I showed you the way that the sentences would literally just end in the middle of a sentence, and I don't know if it was trying to go for this, like, artsy writing style, but I could not even stand it. And me and McKay agree that there's only one creepy moment in this entire book, but it's not worth reading just for that one creepy moment. And it's not even that creepy, like it's not worth it. I feel like for how short this was, like it was literally only like 87 pages on my phone. It was so boring and it felt like it was just dragging on and on and on. I also feel like the ending of this book just wasn't even an ending. It was just like a cop-out ending. Like the book just ended, but it wasn't really an ending. I don't know, the whole thing was just like, I don't understand. Me and McKay were also looking up, apparently this got made into a movie in 2020, I think, like pretty recently, and I think it has like Amanda Seyfried in it, and like some big names are in this movie, and the movie's also getting pretty bad reviews from what we saw, but like, I'm just so confused how they were able to make this into a movie, because the book has such little substance to it. Like, there's not a whole lot that even happens in this book. I don't know. I feel like that's just all my personal opinion though because clearly there are some people out there who love this book but for me mm, I feel like I have to give it one star because there's no redeeming qualities for me like there's nothing about this book that I can say anything positive about like I just really did not enjoy <laughs> my experience reading this which is unfortunate. Most of my reading experience for this readathon has been a flop. I mean I know I gave Cackle three stars still but I didn't like love it and it kind of sucks that, you know, all of the books that I've read for this readathon so far have just been kind of like whatever for me. So that is uh, truly unfortunate. And the only book I have left on my TBR is Nothing But Black and Teeth, which I'm planning on reading today or at least starting today. I don't know if I'll read the whole thing, but it's so short and I'm scared now to read this one because I see this one's also getting a ton of mixed reviews. So like, I'm going to be super bummed if I don't end up enjoying this one. And not only will I be bummed because then I will probably, you know, dislike most of everything that I read for this vlog, but also because I paid full price for this mofo at Barnes & Noble. This thing is $20 just for this tiny, tiny little book. That's another reason why I will be pissed. And also because this cover is so like creepy and stunning and I want to be able to keep this book and recommend this book. So for that reason alone, I'm really hoping that this one is a win for me. So it's already 11 in the morning. I swear these mornings just fly by so fast for me. Where is the time going? Um, I have to make a quick run to Target to get a few last minute things. And then when I come back, I'll make some breakfast and read this book. That's the plan. <laughs> So it's been like nearly an hour, which is so embarrassing. I've only read the first chapter, which was actually 34 pages long. Like it was quite a long first chapter, but also I think the first chapter, it was like intriguing kind of, but it was also kind of boring if I'm being honest, because we're just following, you know, like these four friends. I think there's four of them. And one of their friends, Philip, is like super fucking rich. And he was able to like rent out this mansion for their friends who were like getting married. This mansion is like known to be haunted because they said they like buried this woman alive in the mansion and then they continued to bury more girls there throughout the years. So I don't know, nothing really spooky has happened yet, but it's definitely like setting up the ambiance for what could be a spooky read, you know? But I don't know, dude, do you ever have those days where you just cannot focus on what you're reading? Like that's my brain today. Like it's just so like, like as soon as I get a notification on my phone, I have to check it and then I'm on my phone for like 10 minutes until I put it away and like I just, ugh. It's like one of those days where I'm just struggling to read. Ugh. Okay, hi, I'm back with another update. 
because I'm now 55 pages into this. I'm starting to get really frustrated with these characters because I don't know how old they're supposed to be, you know, but one of them is getting married. So I'm assuming they're supposed to be, you know, not teenagers, but they're acting like straight up teenagers. Like what even is this dialogue, dude? Like for 50 pages so far, they've just been arguing about like, oh, but you still have feelings for them, right? Because you fucked them. Remember that one time when you fucked them? And then they're just like arguing with each other about like past relationships that they've all had with each other. Just like so dramatic. And the two girls that are in this group, they act like so vicious to each other for like no reason just because the one girl like used to date the gr the groom i think that she's getting married to but she's like you know we don't have to like each other but you don't have to be a bitch and then she's like what is your problem with me i mean besides the one i already know she's like my problem is that you can't even answer a question without trying to be a smart ass hate to break it to you but i'm not trying to be smart see that's what i mean i asked if you were okay that was all and you couldn't even answer without some kind of goddamn wisecrack did you actually mean it what did you actually mean it the fuck are you talking about what are you even talking about you're concerned about whether i'm okay did you mean that fuck me that's what i get for trying to be nice to you that's what you get for being fake what do you want from me like this is the actual dialogue that I'm reading right now in this book, like, it's like straight up high school drama, like, I don't give a fuck. And it sucks because, like, there's, like, one creepy moment that's happened so far, like, there was, like, a, you know, decent scene that just happened, like, one scene ago. But other than that, oh my god, it's literally just high school drama, like, who's been fucking who? Like, I don't care! I'm on the way to work and I finished nothing but blackened teeth. I was honestly kind of skimming the end because I just didn't give a fuck to be honest, because this book was a hot ass mess. What is my luck this weekend? What is going on? Dude, I never give out one stars. Like I never give out one stars. It's so rare for me. I think this is the third one of the year for me. And I've had two in this readathon. Like what is going on? It's just, I can't justify giving this book more than one star because of how angry I was at these characters. And like the entire time I was reading it, I was just like, what the fuck is the point? Like, what are these adults? Like, they're acting like children. The horror in this book, I will admit, was slightly better than the previous book that I just read because this book actually does stuff at the end that I was like, oh, okay. But even that, it wasn't good enough horror for me to justify rating this anything higher than a one star because this book was just so frustrating. I was reading this one review on Goodreads that somebody else also gave it one star and they were like, tell me that you don't hate these characters after four pages of this book. And I was like, yes, thank you. They're obnoxious. All they talk about is like their feelings towards each other and how they're still salty about how they fucked other people. And like, oh my God, who the fuck cares? It's just funny because on the inside flap of this book, it says a gorgeously creepy haunted house tale. Like I would not call is gorgeous like what about this is gorgeous the writing style is not gorgeous it's very basic in my opinion like i don't know i just there was nothing about this book that i felt good feelings about it was all just very like mediocre and frustrating <laughs> i'm so sad about this because this is the one that i was really hoping to love because this cover look at it it's stunning it's so creepy like the creepiest thing about this book is the cover okay that's the creepiest thing I don't know what my luck is this weekend, but that is truly unfortunate. I am off to work tonight. It is, I can't believe tomorrow's already Halloween. Like this weekend's just flying by. And tonight's actually gonna be kind of a sad night at work because it's actually my sister's boyfriend, Obed. It's his last night working in our restaurant. Mm! So that's gonna be kind of depressing. I'm bringing cupcakes. That was like part of the reason why I went to Target earlier this morning was I wanted to get him cupcakes. And you know, it's just gonna be a sad, like bittersweet night. <laughs> No, he attended New Salem Academy for a few weeks and then dropped Sharon. Right, Sharon knew about it, but that's as far as that part goes. Happy last day! <laughs> oh, Thank sad, so but happy, but sad. Oh, I also got bad. these blue raspberry sour strips <laughs> and Reese's. Wow. <laughs> Woo! These are nice. Yes. Thank you. Of course. I hope they're good. The they're Halloween themed, kind <laughs> of, so it fits. Fits My the vibe. Collection. Woo! <laughs> Dang, the end of an era. Oh my god. How long have you been here? He's like six, 16. Six, six years? What? No. What? Yeah, maybe. Oh yeah, my nine god. Years. Yeah. Nine what, years. What the heck, dude? It's an era. That's a long time. That's Actually, a really if I'm being honest, it's the uh, sixth most. Sixth most? Like longest streak or whatever. Oh yeah. And this the whole company. company. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god. Wow, depressing. <laughs> that is loyalty. Wow, it's a legendary awesome. day. <laughs> up 
so it's now midnight. I'm back in bed, if you couldn't tell. I've washed my hair and it's been a really great night. I mean, it was a really, you know, kind of sad day at work today, you know, because it was Obed's last shift at the restaurant, which is just, it's so wild, you know, to imagine not working with him. I know you're like, well, what's the big deal? Because you live with him and he's literally like my sister's boyfriend, so I see him all the time. But like working with him is just so much fun. And it's just like, it's wild, you know, because like he got this job when he was like a teenager and now he's 25 and it's just, you know, he's moving on to the next thing, but it's just, it's crazy to imagine working there and not working with him. Like, it's just gonna be so weird. After work, we decided to watch The Night House, which is this horror movie that me and Rachel have really been wanting to watch this one for a while. And it was, it was on Amazon Prime and we did end up having to rent it for $5.99, but honestly, totally worth it. Oh my God, like that was a five out of five star horror movie for me. I was freaking obsessed. It's like, it's one of those movies where you're literally just on the edge of your seat the entire time because you're so, the mood of it is just so uneasy and you're trying to figure out this mystery of like what the fuck is going on. And like the basic premise of the movie is that, you know, this woman, her husband just recently passed away and now she's kind of discovering that there was a part of his life that she didn't know about. And for that reason alone, it kind of reminds me of Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter actually. I mean, it's a lot less violent than Pretty Girls, but just like the idea of a wife like looking into her husband and like what he does when she's not around, like it just kind of reminded me of Pretty Girls for that reason. And it was just, oh my God, it was so freaking good. Like I literally cried at the end, but I was also like so mind blown by everything and like genuinely creeped out. Like there was two jump scares that I nearly shit my pants. It was so scary and so good. And I just really loved it. And I'm so glad to have loved something because I feel like these last two books that I've read have been total bummers. And I feel like I've just been in a really like negative, well, I haven't been like negative, but I've just been speaking negatively on like everything that I've been consuming lately. That's been like horror content. So I'm glad to at least have watched a really, you know, a really great movie. I'm actually planning on starting to edit a little bit of this vlog before I go to bed just so I can stay on top of my shit. And yeah, tomorrow morning, I'm just so excited. Like, I can't believe it's already Halloween. I mean, yeah, technically it's midnight, so it is Halloween now, which is just crazy. Like, it came so fast. And I'm actually really excited for tomorrow morning because we're planning on going to this like pumpkin patch place that has like a corn maze and everything. And we're gonna go with um, one of our work friends, Johnny, and me and Rachel and Obed, we're all gonna go. And I think they're gonna bring Tank and it's just gonna be like a really fun morning. This is the same place where we went last year on Halloween. I feel like it's gonna be our tradition now to go there because it's just like so much fun and they have like apple cider there and they have like these cider donuts that are just like the best thing in the world. Good morning, happy Halloween. <sighs> I can't believe it's finally Halloween. Like it's already here. I've got my um, Halloween shirt on today because it just feels right. Like I need to wear this shirt on Halloween. That's like the whole point, you know? Um, I did put on the cat ears too. I don't know how I'm feeling about them. They feel like they're gonna like really irritate my head. So I don't know if I'm gonna keep wearing them, but I just thought, you know, it'd be fun to kind of like dress up a little bit because I don't really have an outfit for today. Um, I also put on this giant oversized plaid because again, it also just felt right. And yeah, I'm super excited because me, Rachel, and Obed are about to head over to our local cute little like pumpkin patch and like there's a corn maze and there's like a bunch of different stuff to do there. We're gonna meet one of my friends and coworkers, Johnny, over there. And it should be a fun morning. <laughs> but like, whoa, happy Halloween. It's here, oh my God. So we got the look, hair done, turtleneck on. Oh, eyeshadow is orange. <laughs> Ooh, okay, okay. We got, we got the little Frenchie pumpkin socks. <laughs> and they actually say, one sock says treat, the other says trick. Oh my god, Isn't so cute? festive. So cute. So cute. And then we also got the, you know, boots, of course. Frenchy, Frenchy, Frenchy rain boots. Frenchy rain boots, because it's going to be muddy there. <laughs> Happy Halloween, Tinky. And I have Tinky oh. jammies, but I don't know if I should have them wear the jammies at home and then put a sweatshirt on now. I know, I don't know. So I have the jammies to get dirty. Oh. Donuts, they're so good. Okay, we're on the entrance. <laughs> this looks dangerous. Oh my god. Oh god, tank's gonna go right through the fucking water. 
We're gonna come in here and we're never gonna come out. Mm. Oh God. Yeah, make a sharp left. This way looks This is gonna be way better at night. Interesting. I know dude, this would be so scary at night. Windy! Oh my god! Oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. No! Oh, dead end. <laughs> wow, I told you guys. Freaking rip. <laughs> Somebody literally just like was like, oh, I have to get out of here. <laughs> rip. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, God. Getting pretty uh, muddy out here. <laughs> oh, God. We made it out alive. I'll show the sign that says, yeah, you made it. I know. There's like nothing. Oh my god, David. They're like, this isn't an exit. You've actually entered an alternate reality. Shit. We're in a it's so nice, Wow, we did it. Sorry. Hank is filthy. Run! Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Wow, it took a minute, but. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> Leaving the pumpkin patch now. I got a pumpkin. It's only five dollars. Crazy. 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 Pumpkin's all like cute and beautiful and store bought, and mine's like dirty as fuck, <laughs> like from the ground. <sighs> it's your house, you get yours on Halloween. No, no, right? I didn't have many options. There weren't that many left there, but I found one, and it's cute. It happens. Take it easy. Mm. Dingy. <laughs> Thank you, Pixels looks all like cute and like adorable and professional and mine looks like a fucking child made this, honestly. You can tell which one of us is the artist here. Yeah, it's not me. <laughs> Dude, you're just so cute. What the heck? So cute. I love the teeth. It's very cute. This is like scary, but like not in a cute way. Like it's just scary. We got Pizza Hut. As tradition, this little one's mine. We got wings. And a little pizza. Woo! Want something? Let's see here. Death at the dive bar. Let's dun, fucking dun, go. Dun. To kill her. This one says it's easy. So hopefully it doesn't take us too long. Tank is like head chief in charge right yeah, now. Tank's in charge. Tank, you are leading this investigation. <laughs> aye, aye, Look captain. at his little skulls outfit. <laughs> oh, you like it? oh my god, it's so cute. Mm. So I thought that was extra large and it still too small. Oh, fuck. So it begins. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, man. be mentoring a new member of our investigative team, and I trust that you're up to the challenge of solving this crime. Your client, Carmen. Carmen. Okay. We're struggling to get well that is a wrap on Halloween on weekend ween I'm sorry that I kind of sucked at vlogging for the rest of the day But we were pretty much just like watching movies and chilling and eating pizza and playing hunt a killer It was a very chill night, but yeah, it was really fun We ended up watching scream while we were like, you know drawing on our pumpkins and stuff Which was really fun We didn't end up carving them because we didn't know if we had like the proper knives for it and with our apartment Like I thought it would get really like too messy probably So we just did that and then 
we had Pizza Hut for dinner, and then we played the Hunt a Killer game, which was really fun. It only took us like a little bit less than an hour this time to solve it, which was cool. <laughs> and then we ended up watching the movie Trick or Treat, which was so cute, and I've never seen this movie before, and I thought it was so good. It was like a little anthology movie. It was like these four short stories that all take place on Halloween, and they're all kind of like connected in a way. It was just a really, really cool movie, and I'm so glad that I watched it on Halloween because I think it's like the perfect Halloween movie. And so yeah, now I'm just gonna spend the rest of the night finishing editing this vlog so that I can hopefully get it up by tomorrow. And yeah, thank you so much for watching this Camp Weekend Ween vlog. I'm sorry that um, <laughs> this vlog is probably pretty underwhelming and not that great because I disliked almost nearly everything that I read, which is super unfortunate. Sorry, I had to set the camera down because it was getting too heavy, but um, I just wanted to once again say thank you so freaking much to anybody that participated in this quick little readathon that me and Olivia hosted. And thank you so much to anybody who, you know, bought merch for this readathon, anybody who is participating and like tagging me and Olivia on Instagram and social media. It's just, it's so exciting every time we get to host one of these readathons. Like it just genuinely warms my heart. Like this community is seriously so special. And it just really makes me happy when we can come together like this and read horror books and talk about horror books and just like have a really great time. So yeah, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you had an amazing Halloween. I had a really great Halloween this year and I will see you very soon with November content. Holy crap, can you believe it? November is here now. That's wild. I'll see you later. Bye. Thank you.